Hi everybody. Okay, so I wanted to quickly go through some exercises that I do pre-surgery. Of course, I will document post-surgery PT stuff as well as I possibly can. For the last few years, I've worked in a th physical therapy practice and done just so much rehab on my own. I figured if you can't beat them, join them, which is why I decided to go into physical therapy in the first place. Although it doesn't help my pain that much in the moment, it helps my pain not progress as quickly and as time goes by. So I'm gonna walk you quickly through the exercise routine that I do, the order of which is very important. So I will go through those one by one. I'm gonna start with the hamstring stretch. Like I mentioned in my first video, very unknown about Shorman's disease is that uh, people stay rounded, posterior pelvic tilt, shortened hamstrings, chronically tight hamstrings for Shorman's people. So what I like to do is do a passive hamstring stretch I get in between a doorway. I lie on a comfortable thing so I'm not on the hardwood. That would not be fun against the Shorman's bump. And then what I do is I just put one leg up against the door and one, the second leg goes flat against the ground. So I'm just passively just trying to press my heel into the door, straighten my leg, take some deep breaths. I'll hang out here for a minute, then I'll switch sides. Again, straightening this foot out. The more you straighten your foot out through the door, the more it's gonna stretch the leg that's up against the, the door. Again, I'll hold this, deep breaths. I'll try and relax as much as possible. Taking deep breaths, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes even. I will do, I try to do both sides for a minute or two twice. That is the doorway hamstring stretch. So after I do the hamstring stretch, what I come down to on the mat, and I'm gonna do some supermans. I'm gonna lie in a prone position. What I do is squeeze my glutes and activate my glutes as I lift up and extend my thoracic. This is my favorite exercise to do. I'm trying to curve my apex into extension and I'm only resisting gravity. So sometimes this is really difficult for me to do in a standing position, but when I come into prone and I'm only working against the forces of gravity against my apex, and I can do this Superman motion, again, I'm trying not to lift, sometimes I accidentally do, but I'm trying to squeeze my glutes and keep my uh, legs on the ground instead of like the full Superman. That's because I don't wanna stress the lumbar too much. Hold it for two or three seconds and come down. I try and do about 20 reps, two or three sets of it. When I get back up, it definitely helps me stand straighter. The next exercise is the clamshell. I'm gonna show you this on my left side, using my left foot. Again, you're gonna do this bilaterally on both sides, keeping things equal. What you're gonna do is grab a pillow, lie on your side. You're going to put your legs together and the back of your heels should be in line with your butt. So I don't care how far you stretch out your legs, just make sure wherever your heels line up is about where your butt lines up. And then from there, you're gonna uh, kind of rotate your body down towards the ground, activate your abs so you're not getting too much thoracic rotation, especially for us Shorbins people, we wanna limit our thoracic rotation to not send anything off. And then all you do is activate your left glute, squeeze and lift this up. Hold for three seconds and bring it back down. Again, engage the core, keep my body from rotating, lift up, hold, one, two, three, and back down. That's just three reps on my left side, but I would do that at least 15 to 20 on each side. So after you do the clamshell, you're gonna get, um, I switch sides, now you're gonna get in the same position with your bottom leg, but your top leg is gonna straighten out. Pull it back just a tad as if you were going to uh, seven o'clock on a clock, and then just lift on up. This is a side leg, leg raise, side straight leg raise, whatever you wanna call it, it helps. What this is gonna do, between this and the clamshells, it's gonna stabilize your hips and uh, your pelvic area. And that's so important for us kyphosis, scoliosis people because that's the base of our spine. So the way I like to start things off, again, hamstring stretch to start. 
Uh, then I like to do that thoracic extension, so Superman's just to get some stability through the area where I have the most pain. Then I'm going to stabilize my pelvis, and now I'm going to go on to working some of my abs. Uh, and, and now we're going to get we're going to start working up the chain again. Since it is the day before my surgery, um, I'm not going to go flare up my abs and kind of like do too much right now. But I'm going to quickly just tell you guys the ab exercises that I do. So I will do some planks. I'll do at least three normal planks. Uh, 30 to 45 seconds up to a minute. I'll do three to four side planks on each side for at least 30 seconds to fire my obliques. I will do bird dogs uh, where you extend one arm and foot from each side. Again, these are great cross body exercises uh, for people with us with scoliosis or kyphosis. Um, so that means we've done hamstrings, uh, glutes, hips, thoracic, abs. For shoulders, I'll do some eyes Y's and T's. Maybe I'll do a slight hip hinge and get my back going a little bit. And of course, especially, especially, especially for people with a more pronounced curve in your thoracic, you may have more cervical pain because you're more curved in your thoracic, so you're forced to do more extending from your cervical. Shin retractions. So these are just essentially making yourself as ugly as possible, holding it for about five seconds, and then relaxing. I can imagine if you're like me, you're in a lot of pain. So uh, having kind of like a not too intense, but a good exercise protocol that can give you some stability and maybe maybe take the edge off a little bit, but kind of help you feel more aligned and more balanced. Uh, hopefully that gets you through the day. And ultimately what that really hopes is that when you get out of surgery, your muscles are ready to help you start to recover.